This is Circleville, Ohio. I know, it's very square looking, but back in 1836, it looked like this, a circle. The story goes that in 1810, the Ohio legislature established Pickaway County, and the local leaders needed to find a site to establish a city, their county seat. They found a circular earthworks built by a prehistoric mound building culture and decided to use it as a template. They noticed that the circle was perfect, better than they could have drawn up themselves. So Circleville was born. But what happened to Circleville? Well, about a year after that image was drawn, this one, city leaders decided they had enough of that circle. They found it to be an inefficient use of land, what with all the weird edges. And the lots were inconvenient shapes. They petitioned the state government to create the Circleville Squaring Company. And after a few decades, the Squaring Company completed the complex task of redrawing streets and lots and squaring the circle. We live in a world where most cities are organized around a few basic ideas, such as the unyielding gridiron, the spaghetti of suburban cul-de-sacs, or the unplanned jumble of organic cities. Would we be better off if cities were planned in neat rings, radiating out from a defined center point? The idea isn't new and it's been proposed and even built across millennia, yet we don't see many new cities with a circular layout. Why? Let's get into it after the bike belt. It's actually not that hard to find cities with a circular layout out there. I mean, they're not common, but they're there if you know where to look. Here's Corona, California, where you find a very ordinary grid surrounded by a single circular street. Up north in Patterson, California, you'll find another circular city. Well, almost. But those are just some circular cities near where I live. I bet there are circular cities near you too. Drop some names in the comments. Notable examples outside California include the new al Fala district in Abu Dhabi. This one has some bonus wavy flower petals. You have Rotunda West in Florida, complete with circular canals and almost inexplicably nothing interesting in the center of the circle. That's just a missed opportunity. Now, most of the examples are circles just because circles look cool. Corona or al Fara or Rotunda don't have a logical reason for looking the way they do. But there are some legitimate reasons for designing a city as a circle, but you just have to go back in time. And before we hop in our time machine, I wanna make it clear that I'm not talking about any old city with circular streets. I'm talking about something called a radial concentric pattern. So nothing like Corona with a regular old grid inside a circle. We're looking at circular cities with streets radiating out from the center. And some of the biggest proponents of this plan type are Renaissance military engineers. The most iconic example of a circular Renaissance city is Palma Nova, founded by the Venetians in 1593. It's not technically a circle as it has nine sides on the outside and the inner plaza is a hexagon, but it's close enough. Streets radiate out from a center point. They line up with the defensive bastion so reinforcements can be made quickly. This illustration shows a tower at the center that allows military leadership to see what's happening down every major avenue. The central hexagon could actually be closed off and fortified if the outer walls were breached. The fortifications are ringed with barracks and parade grounds for troops. The rest of the area of Palmanova is given over to non-military uses like homes and marketplaces. Everything is orderly and rational and in line with Renaissance thinking at the time. The city had a military purpose and a circle was the best way to achieve that purpose. Okay, so designing a city as a circle 500 years ago might've made sense then, but maybe not today. Why else would you want a circular city? Well, it could be for the symbolism. If you put something in the middle of a circle, it means that it's really important. The classic example of this is the round city of Baghdad, built in 766 by Caliph al-Mansur. It was about 1,000 cubits in diameter or 2,300 meters for those of us who don't speak cubit. It had four gates leading into the circle with a double set of walls. Homes and markets lined the edge, but the stars of the show were two buildings at the center, the Caliph's palace and the great mosque. This was the Caliph's not so subtle way of telling everyone he's the center of the universe, metaphorically speaking at least. You can't really do something like that with a grid. Okay, so the last couple of reasons for designing a circular city aren't really relevant to modern times. But what about traffic? That's certainly a modern problem. Can a radial concentric design improve traffic flow? Well, the answer is maybe. Highways and transit networks can sometimes be organized in what's called an orbital radial configuration. That's where you have major roads or transit lines radiating out from the city center, facilitating commuting from the suburbs into the city. Then you have the orbital ring roads or ring lines making it easy to commute around the center. No study I've seen suggests that orbital radial movement patterns are inherently better than say a pure grid system, but there's definitely a clear logic to it. Commuters generally appreciate the choice between going through the urban core or around it to reach a destination. In fact, one study showed that commuters won't always choose the fastest route from A to B if that fastest route goes through the city center. They prefer to drive around on the ring road. 
If you think ring roads like highway ring roads make a city a circular one, then the number of circular cities jumps quite a bit. You have Houston, of course, with multiple rings. Honestly, at the metropolitan scale, its transportation network definitely qualifies as a circular city. How's traffic, Houstonians? But like all things transportation, it's bigger over in China. Look at the rings around Beijing. They're a little square, but I still think they count. Okay, so so far we've seen cities designed as circles because they look cool, because they offer protection, there's symbolic reasons, and even traffic reasons, potentially. But what if a circular city could solve all those problems and more? What if they could provide almost a utopian ideal of a city? That's the thought urban reformer Ebenezer Howard had when he designed this, published in his book Garden Cities of Tomorrow over 100 years ago. His book set off an entire city planning movement, and has been called by some as the most important book on the topic of city planning. And at the heart is a circular city. It's a circle because the whole point was moving people out of smoke-filled, dangerous industrial revolution cities and into the countryside. Out in the countryside, the entire design of a city could be carefully controlled. This was completely different than the ad hoc, cobbled together nature of the 19th century city with medieval origins. A circle was rational, the opposite of a city like London. Howard provides some detail about how these circular cities should be laid out. Six radial boulevards separate the city into six wedges. And here's a diagram for one representative wedge. At the center is a five acre garden surrounded by important political and cultural institutions like the town hall, museums, library, theater, concert hall, and hospital. Those buildings are surrounded by a large central park, which itself is ringed by a glass enclosed crystal palace, a perfect place to stroll through a winter garden when the weather gets bad. The next ring is labeled for houses and gardens, meaning homes with yards. Cutting through the middle of that zone is a grand boulevard so wide it effectively is another central park complete with schools and churches in the middle. On the very edge of town, you see the industrial zones, factories basically. You know Howard is a real urbanist because he included a bicycle factory. The entire circle is ringed by a railroad to move people and goods, and the city itself is set in amongst productive farmland and natural areas. Modern day researchers actually modeled the city in a computer and found that residents of the Garden City would be no more than three minutes from a green space on average. That's not too bad considering the Industrial Revolution alternative. Now, no actual or circular city like this was ever built. Howard himself said that this was just a diagram, not an actual blueprint for a real city. Garden cities were built in England based on his concepts, but they didn't keep to his circular city plan. But circles can be used as diagrams for describing ideas. They can even be used to describe how real cities work. It's time to shift to another famous circular city diagram. This is the Burgess Urban Land Use Model or Concentric Zone Model. It's a series of concentric circles meant to describe how real cities are organized. According to Burgess, the center is the central business district, where it's easiest for everyone to get to because of all the major roads and rail lines converging there. The first ring around the CBD is where you see more industrial uses. They're near the CBD to take advantage of some of those transportation benefits associated with the CBD, such as easy access to labor and materials. Think of any older central industrial area in your own city. Beyond that is the ring with the worst housing as they're next to industrial areas. And sometimes these industrial areas are encroaching on that housing. They're often home to first-generation immigrants and the poorest urban households. From there, subsequent rings get richer and richer as they're located further from factories and closer to the hinterlands. Burgess proposed this idea back in 1925. And while it kind of might have been true then, at least in some US cities, by the 1950s, cars had supercharged suburban development, and now we are looking at cities as polycentric metropolises, basically cities where there are lots of different areas with dense job growth, not just in the CBD. You have to give Ebenezer Howard some credit here, as he sort of predicted this polycentric model a decade before Burgess. Not too shabby. The concentric zone model was challenged by the sector model, which considers cities to have wedges instead of rings, but this model is also not very helpful when thinking about modern cities. After all of this, should we design cities as circles? Well, I personally don't think that we should design a city according to a particular shape, just because we like the shape. Topography, for example, can make a circle city impossible, or at least impractical. But if you have a city with a strong urban center, it can be helpful to have quick ways for people on the outskirts to reach the center, things like radial boulevards. And you might want to connect those radial boulevards so people can travel between them without having to go to the center. Pretty soon you have a city that behaves much like the diagrammatically circular city. You just have to make sure you don't end up going full Houston. And you have to hope that you don't generate enough backlash to your circular design so your city ends up like poor Circleville, Ohio. 
Now, I know there's no clear answer about what's the best, a circular city or a grid city, but there's one thing I can be sure of. It's that Nebula, the streaming service I'm a founding member of, is doing even more and finding even more ways to make it the best value streaming service out there. First of all, all of my videos posted on YouTube are already up early on Nebula. That means you can sign up for Nebula right now and watch my next video without waiting a few weeks for it to appear on YouTube. That's pretty great already. Nebula also has no ads, making the entire viewing experience much better for you, but it also makes it better for the creator. We don't have to worry about pleasing the algorithm to get views. The subscription model is just more stable and sustainable. And a lot of those resources are going right back to creators to produce Nebula originals. These are passion projects that answer the question, what would videos from great thoughtful creators look like if they had more resources to do that thing that they do so well? 2023 was a great year for Nebula Originals. I even put out a Nebula Original series called Great Cities that profiles some of the most influential cities out there, right at the inflection point that made them great. You can learn about why Venice built canals and why New York built Central Park. It's some of my best work because Nebula provided additional resources, and it's only available on that platform. There are so many other great Nebula Originals coming out in 2024 too. The ever popular Jetlag series starring the crew from Wendover Productions and Half is Interesting just wrapped up a season featuring Michelle Carey. For those who don't know, Jetlag is like a travel game show and it's incredibly addictive and tailor-made for anyone who likes my channel. Real Life Lore continues to publish excellent episodes of their Modern Conflict series, like the most recent on the Yugoslav Wars of the 1990s. Real Science is starting a series where two amateur naturalists try to survive using only tools from the Paleolithic era. And that's just the beginning. Nebula has even more in store for 2024. Hey, that rhymes. In all, Nebula offers you, the viewer, an ad-free experience filled with videos produced by a curated group of thoughtful YouTubers. And those thoughtful creators are also publishing big budget, high quality, exclusive content. And you get all of this for a surprisingly affordable price. When you sign up at my link, nebula.tv slash citybeautiful, you'll get 40% off an annual subscription, which brings the cost down to the equivalent of $250 a month. My channel will even get a portion of that subscription fee as long as you stay subscribed. So it's one of the best ways to support me in this channel. So go click on the link on screen or in the description and support this channel and get yourself a subscription to Nebula. Thanks.